Hi, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to part two of making your pinwheel rolls. So hello, hello, you can give me a wave if you're here. Thank you to those that joined me this morning. Um, if you're joining now and you haven't made your bread dough, then um, I won't take it personally, head over to part one of the video, which is over in the playlist, or it's on the, if you look down on the left-hand menu, there's a section with videos and it will be the one from this morning, okay? So head over there. If, however, you do have your dough, you should, right, I'm doing mine, have something that looks gorgeous like that. Oh, and smell it. Does it smell really bready? For those of you that have wine, which hopefully is the grown-ups, it might smell a bit whiny, a bit yeasty. And you'll see these lovely bubbles all here underneath, okay? And that's all of our yeast making our bread dough rise. So that's what we're going to start with. So hi, guys. Hi, we've got Ria and Poppy. Hi, Michelle. Hello, hello. So if, um, like, as I said, if you haven't got dough already, stop watching this live and head over to the other one that I did this morning and watch part one. You will still have plenty of time to make your bread for dinner, but the dough that you're gonna make, which is step one from this morning, needs to rise till it looks like this, and it will be an hour or so somewhere warm in your house, okay? Hi, Luca. Hi, hello, Hetty. I'm saying hello to lots of you. So hopefully all of you have got a bowl of dough like this. Fantastic. Hi, Marby. Hi, Luca. Hi, Liza. Hello, hello, hello. I've got Imogen and Amy, I can see. Fantastic, fantastic. Good. So most of you, I think, didn't have a problem with this. If your dough's not risen as much as mine, it might just be to do with how much yeast or starter you had, um, the kind of flour, how warm your kitchen was. So don't worry. As long as it's risen and it's got a lot bigger than last time, it will be fine, okay? Um, hi, Imogen and Amelia and Jay and Megan and me. If you were here this morning, fantastic. Amelia and Finley, cut, good. So if your dough has not risen as much, if you made it this morning and it's not quite ready, it needs a bit more time, then just watch along with me. Give it another half an hour or whatever if we're doing this now, and then you come back to it a bit later, okay? It's absolutely fine. You're not going to have a problem. Hi, Flora and Ella. Brilliant. Jaden. Okay, so we're good to go. So when you have a smell of your bread, it should smell all delicious. And obviously, you guys check in should all have washed your hands, which I just did. Hi, Rivene. Yours hasn't risen, Donna. Okay, the starter rose so much until you stopped feeding it. Okay, so if you were using a starter, you should have fed it before, so it was all nice and frothy and alive this morning when before you put it in with your bread. It may be your starter is not strong enough. So as long as it's risen, um, you should be okay. If it hasn't risen enough, then as I said, maybe leave it for a bit longer and come back to it later. Um, especially now, when the kitchens are cold or you know when the temperature's not as warm, it just takes longer for the yeast to rise. So the yeast always needs the food, so it, you know, in, in the flour or whatever sugar if you're giving it, and it also needs to have a nice drawer. So if some of you have put it in proving drawers, or if you've got a bread proving function in your oven, or just in an airing cupboard or something like that. I've just left mine on my work surface, but we had from about, what did we do it this morning, 10 o'clock till two, so we've had lots of time to do this. You like this, Sarah, that's good. Hannah, you're with your dough, amazing. Caitlin and Kira, Steffi and Stella, and Florence, good. So remember this morning, we put our finger in, didn't we? And it kind of rose back up. And that was the test. Now, if you put your finger in now, what you'll see is it doesn't do that. It makes a hole. Can you see? And that's how we know that it's in the right place. So stick your finger in. Hi, Beatrice, Ruby, Evie. Oh, your birthday is tomorrow. Fantastic. So your dough should be good. So I'm actually going to put this to one side. We're going to make our filling first, okay? I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to use a little food processor. Let me get this and show you. Um, and what I need you to do, if you are making a filling with me, oh, I've got this out earlier. Um, if you are making a filling with me, then that's perfect. Just watch along. If you are going to do some sun-dried tomato or pesto fillings, then that's perfect. So I'll show you what I've got. So we've got our dough. I'm going to make a filling. I'm going to make two actually. So I've got some black olives. You can use whatever colour you like, and I'm using black because it's really pretty in the pinwheels. I'm also going to do some with sun-dried tomatoes and I kept it this is a jar with oil so if you're using um, olives and oil or anything like that we can use the oil so I'm going to do that I've got a little bit of garlic so you guys can get all of this ready and I have some lovely fresh basil okay if you don't have basil do not worry okay smells amazing hi Tyler yours is sticky that's fine do not worry about the dough okay so I'm going to show you how you can make some of these fillings to go with bread if you don't have the ingredients to do that or you don't want to make your own, in just a jar, if you've got some pesto or sun-dried tomato paste or if you just want to put cheese in or maybe some ham, whatever you want to do. 
So just find your style fillings that are going to go in your head, okay? Your daughter's not ready. That's okay. That's fine. You can do it later. It's absolutely fine. So just watch along and see what we do. Hi, Flora. You don't have olives. That's fine. Do not worry. Yeah, you can just use sun-dried tomatoes or something else. It's not a problem. So I'm going to show you what I'm what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make my sun-dried tomato one first. So I'm going to put just a little bowl. These are just the IKEA bowls, my scale, so I can measure it out and turn on to G. I'm going to take out, like it says in the recipe, about 80 grams of sun-dried tomatoes. So these are in, they're all nice and soft, they're in oil. So I'm just going to use a fork, just put them out. Um, and I'm going to keep the oil. I'll show you because we don't want to waste anything. So it's just a handful, like half a dozen or something. And it can be roughly. So these are delicious. I love sun-dried tomatoes. They look so nice. They've got really nice colour so that you can see them. This is it's like making your own pesto. So you don't have to do it. It's a great way to do it. So those are my sun-dried tomatoes. So I've weighed them out. So I'm gonna pop them in my little food processor here. So I've got a little one, if you've got a big one, you can do a big one, it's all right. And then I'm also gonna put in, do you remember our garlic? So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a piece of garlic. We'll get one out. This is a clove. I've got a nice big one there. It's in its pink wrapping paper. Can you see? You might have one in white. That's fine. And you probably remember the other day. What we did is you just take a knife. It doesn't need to be a sharp knife. I'll take my nice big green. And we're just going to put it on top of the garlic. Put our hands on top and press until you hear it. Can you hear that? And then that's going to loosen the skin up. And we're going to be able to peel that off really easily. I always cut the bottom bit, actually, so let me cut that. I've got oily fingers now. But so all of that skin is just going to come off really easily, all of that paper. We don't want to eat that, so that's going to go straight in a bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to need half of my garlic for my tomato and half for the olives, okay? So I'm going to cut my garlic. I'm going to put half of it in with my tomatoes and half of it in with okay so that's it and then a couple of spoons of oil so you can use whatever you've got but as i said if you've got a jar you'll use what you've got here how many tomatoes i think i put in about six it's about 80 grams what have i got here one two three four five six maybe like six seven something like that roughly it doesn't really matter and then i'm going to use a couple of spoons of this lovely oil because it's soaked in all the tomatoes it tastes delicious can you see them just squeeze them so don't waste it and this is lovely Smell that jar, and you can see that some all those little bits of garlic and herbs, and they are really yummy um, to use when you're cooking anything. You just use the tomato flavored oil. So, so that's going to go to one side. So just in here, my little processor, and if you've got a smoothie maker or something like that, or a Nutribullet, you can do it in there too. Okay. Um, right, you're waiting for the video to start. It's frozen. Oh, that's strange, Veronica. I think you guys send me some thumbs up if you're all okay. Some send me some sad faces if everybody else it might be your Wi-Fi, but don't worry, I'm going to put this on replay and you'll be able to see it later. So just in there, I've got a little bit of oil, my sun-dried tomatoes, and half a clove of garlic. And then what I'm going to do is that one there. This goes on here. It's like making a jigsaw, isn't it? You might have a different one at home. I'm going to plug that in, and then we're going to whiz it up, and you're going to see what a nice little paste it makes. So you can do this in a different pressure so sorry. And it's going to make a nice noise. So you always got a nice button. So you want to press the button. It's good noise, huh? Maybe really like that. And then you don't want to put the hands in. Oops. Because it's got um, a fork. So can you use tin tomatoes? I wouldn't use tin tomatoes because they're quite wet. So sun dried tomatoes are a bit drier and they've also got much better flavour. You can use a bit of sun uh, tomato paste. And like I said, if you've got a jar like this, this is red pesto, but if you've got some sun-dried tomato paste or something, just use that. I'm just showing you really how you can make your own. So I've just mushed that down a bit, um, and you might give it a fine whiz. And we get it into a nice paste, I'll show you. A bit more noise, I'm afraid. Perfect. And I'm going to stick this out so you can see it, okay? So all I've done is I've made my own sun-dried tomato paste. Oh, I was going to put some basil in there, wasn't I? Should I put a bit of basil in? Okay, let's do that again. I put in a few leaves of basil. They were right in front of me. So if you've got some basil and you want to add that in, that's really nice. And that 
our legs will have a few green flecks. So I've just done a bit of green basil like that, and I'm going to whiz that again. Now you can watch the colour. Oh, that smells amazing. Lovely. So I've got little nice green flecks in there. When you're using this, be safe, take the knife out, put it to one side so you don't put your hands in, and then we're just going to scrape all of that paste. So it's kind of like, I don't know, a, jam, a tomato jam or something. So it doesn't want to, you don't want it very oily. You want it, we're going to spread it in a minute. So we want it so we can spread it like that. So can you see? So I've got tomato paste there. So that's perfect. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my olives. So I'm going to put my knife back in. And here I've just got some olives. I've weighed out the black ones. My half a clove of garlic. That's going in there. And then also I'm going to add a little bit of this oil because I don't want to waste this oil, so I might as well. So I'll use my spoon. Right. You missed a bit. What's going to the food processor? So I'm making two different pastes. So we've got two different colors in wheels. So the first one I made was sun-dried tomato. So this one, there were about seven or eight um, sun-dried tomatoes, a little bit of fat you've got, and half a clove of the garlic, a couple of tablespoons of the oil, and I use the oil from the jar. You can just use olive oil or whatever else you've got. And then I just whisk it up until I get this lovely paste, okay? And now I'm doing exactly the same with my olives. So I'm not going to put any um, basil in this time. So here I've just got 80 grams of olives, and I'm using black, but you could do green or a mix, it's fine. Half a clove of garlic, and then I've put a couple of spoons of oil in. So now you're going to know what colour this one's going to go. So let's do that. We'll whiz it up again. So you'll listen to it. When you hear, when you hear that it's coming around any more, you might want to take your fork or spoon and just push it down like that. So everything gets close to the bottom near the blade. And then we're going to know again. Give it another whiz, okay? Perfect. You do need to mix it because otherwise it won't come together. So if I take this one out, taking my blade out again, so I've got a really nice paste here. And it should smell delicious at where you are. It smells yummy here. It will smell this lovely garlic and basil. It's really nice. So there's my black paste from my olives. And if you did a green olives, that would also look really pretty. Don't worry. So I basically got two pastes. I'm going to put this out of the way because I won't need that. I'm going to give myself a little wipe down. So you might want to give yourself a little wipe if you're a bit oily on your table like I am. And then I'm going to have a little look at your questions and see you guys have all got something to spread. And then we're going to start with the bread dough. So take that out of the way and then you can all see what I've got here and what I'm doing. So it's good to tidy as we go, isn't it? So I'm going to put those out of the way. If you're using the sofa bar and you've just been watching me, just leave out your jar. And then we've just got out, so whatever jars you're using or the paste that you've got, some bread, and then we're going to use that rolling pin, okay? Perfect. So, if you don't know how to use more tomato, yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm just showing you different things. And you could, if you had loads of um, basil, you could make about your own basil pesto and put in some pine nuts or something like that. Oh, a couple of sad faces. Is that because you don't have olives? Or are you still making? That's fine. I'm just going to check through all the comments. Um, the garlic, Helen, goes into the um, food processor. So half a garlic, if you're doing two different flavours, half a, a clove of garlic when you're doing your this, and half when you're doing your tomatoes. So actually, if you have a look, that's why one of the reasons I like the black um, tap tap and pesto is because you, if you have a look there, you might be able to see the little white bit, and that's my garlic in there. So it's just basically pushed up olives with a bit of garlic and that is mushed up tomatoes and the tomatoes are softer so they come more, more like a paste they're a bit easier to spread you're doing a pizza one that's like a good idea that's lovely and you've made a paste using pesto that's perfect um normally a garlic you do put garlic in pesto um so if you have that's great and if you haven't don't worry about it if it's will come out of the machine it'll be fine you can try it next time so lots of you making paste and these are really good if you ever want to do your own sun-dried tomato paste and have it on pasta and something later, or like you said, put it on a pizza, that is perfect, okay? And don't worry about the raw garlic, everything's going to cook. So if you put it on a pasta or pizza, or like we're going to put it on our bread, that's going to be fine, okay? Good. So, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go and you've got your paste, you've got your bread. 
So you've got garlic, that sounds gorgeous. How much filling will you need if you bought it? Probably a couple of tablespoons. Don't worry, it's a couple of teaspoons. Don't worry at the moment, I'm going to show you when we roll our bread out, you'll know exactly how much to put on, okay? Um, if you've got something in a jar, it'll be fine. I'm going to get a spoon because I think it might be easier to show you with a spoon. So I'm going to take that. Good, so we're all good to go. Now this is the fun part. So now once you've cleaned up your table, I'm actually just going to dry it a little bit because mine's a bit wet. We're going to roll out our dough. So a very wet table like me, you might just want to give it a little dry. And then it's fun. So remember, we waited all that time for our dough to get bigger because it was nice and warm. And now we're going to do something that's called knocking it back. Okay, so we're going to take it out the bowl and look at that. Can you see those lovely bubbles and look how stringy it is? And look how that is now. It's sticking. Now remember what I said this morning, we don't want a lot of washing up. So make sure you scrape all of those bits out. And dough is quite sticky, like you said. So if I take a little piece of dough and I just roll it around the bowl, you'll see it will stick to all the bits. And then my bowl is basically clean, pretty much. It's like having a rub. See what I'm doing? I'm kind of rubbing my bit of dough here. And you'll see how clean my bowl comes. So it makes washing up much easier because I've been told by the grown-ups that you have to do your washing up. So there's my clean bowl. There's my lovely bit of dough. Yeah. Mm, doesn't it smell amazing? And you can see if you squish it now, it's getting much smaller, isn't it? Some of you showed me your pictures, and it's really smooth, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It feels really soft and silky. It's not dry or cracked like it was when we started this morning. Okay, it smells good, doesn't it? And you remember, it smells like this, like bread now. It didn't smell like bread this morning, did it? Because the yeast hadn't got going. So that is good. Right, so what we're going to do is you're going to take a rolling pin. You don't really flour. If you've got a very sticky up surface, you might want a tiny, tiny bit. The way I do it, if I like to use flour, is I put a little bit on the table and I take a bit and I rub, make my rolling pin all dirty, give it a massage. Can you see what I'm doing all the way along? And then it's a bit like the pizza dough we dealt with last week. This is naughty dough. It does not like to listen. So you can give it a little bit of a smack first, okay? And then we're going to roll it into a nice big rectangle. So as I roll, if you watch this, can you see it shrinks back? It's bigger and then it shrinks back. So we're going to keep turning it. And we're going to see, stretch it out with those muscles all the way to the top and all the way back. Pick it up, turn it around. All the way that way and all the way in. And it's going to take you quite a while to get it into a nice rectangle. So that's what we're going to do together. Did I flour the workshop? You don't really need to have one. You can it because it's not, although it feels like it sticks, you can pick it up and you can keep turning it. I put a little bit of flour in my rolling pin. That's usually the easiest. And you use wholemeal, that's okay, it was slightly different, but you can keep going. It looks like it doesn't stretch, you kind of got to tell it who's boss. And I want to show you this, so you can see that some bits you roll a bit thinner and these are a bit thicker. So we always want to roll, make the same thickness all the way around. So if you've got a bit that's thinner, roll the thicker bit out. So I'm pushing all the way over and eventually it, I will tell it who's boss. So, okay, and you can tell it who's boss as well. So let's stretch it all out. Can you see it? Yeah, the garlic, tomato paste, and the olives, they're in a separate bowl. So don't worry about those. I'm just stretching my bread dough out. We want this to be quite nice and big. Okay. So hopefully you're, and you, some of you said that your dough um, was not so uh, big. It hadn't risen so much. So if it hasn't risen so much, you might find this a bit easier. This is because we've got the gluten going in here. It's really, that's gluten is that makes it really stretchy and elastic. So, can you see it's getting bigger? Getting a lot bigger now. It gets easier, doesn't it? But we're using all those arm muscles. This is a good, like a Joe Wicks workout for the arms today, isn't it? That kneading morning and all of this rolling now. So, what have we got here? I'm going too fast. Okay, don't worry. I'm just, I'm going to slow down because you were just rolling it. So, we've got plenty of time. Don't worry. So all you want to do is like me, keep stretching your dough. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm putting hands on top. We don't want to put your fingers over because I've put my fingers over and I'm going to roll my fingers. So imagine you've got those beautiful rings like this morning. Lift your fingers up and we're going to push, 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 push as far as we can reach. And then you might push, push, push on another bit till it's all even. And you can just go around like this, like an enormous pizza. And then we lift it up, turn it over and do a bit more stretching until we get it. How thick? Um, fairly thin, so maybe a centimetre or so. I've got some lovely bubbles in my dough. Um, so if you've got some nice bubbles, can you see this one here? This is a really good sign. There. You see that bubble there on the edge. 
right. Okay. Actually, it's not right. I said it's thinner, it's thinner than that, isn't it? It's probably like, I don't know, a few mils. So you want it quite big. This is a baking tray. Okay, so as an idea, we kind of want to make it about the same size as a baking tray. That's normally why. What we want to do. Okay. And then we'll get more rolls out because we're going to roll it up in a minute. All right. So I'm stretching. Can you see it's easier now, doesn't it? Once you've told it, yours is sticky. Okay, so put a little bit of flour, a bit more flour on your rolling pin, maybe a little bit on the table. Um, but you don't want too much. It shouldn't be, you can see it sticks a little bit. The bread dough shouldn't really stick too much. Nice, huh? And if you guys are sharing, then obviously do half each. So if you're doing, if you're sharing with your brother or sister, then yours will be a bit smaller than mine. And that's okay, because I'm going to cut mine in half in a minute anyway. So that's mine. I think that's probably pretty good. Right. How are we doing? So if I give you an idea, that's what mine kind of looks like. Hold it up on me so you can see. It looks like an apron, isn't it? So there is my bread dough all rolled out. And it shouldn't be too bad. You can see it's not touch the table. My rolling pin's clean. My hands are clean. It's not, my hands are a bit red because I've been pressing quite hard. Um, but that's really all you need. Yes, if you're using an old purpose flour, I can't even pronounce that. I'm sorry. Did I get that wrong? You're right. So especially if you guys are using what in America they call all-purpose flour, like a plain flour, it will be different, okay? And it's just with how much protein and how much gluten is in the flour. So that's why I try um, strong flour when it says strong white bread flour. That, that and if you look on the side, it normally tells you what percentage protein it is. So like this one's 13.4. So this normally has more protein and then more gluten than the um, flour, like a self-raising flour or a plain flour, which they sometimes call all-purpose flour, that you use when we do bakes and cakes and things like that. Okay, yours is a rolling thing. I keep stretching it, Sammy. It will feel like it's not going, but you can see I had to work quite hard on that. You're having fun, Sam. You're good. It's really hard work, isn't it? Get those muscles going. So it, it will, you want to, sometimes you can stretch it a bit, or like I, you saw me with the first bit, give it a bit of a smack to, you know, stretch it out a bit and then roll, okay? So everybody else good on rolling it out? Let's see. Fine. So I'm going to wait a minute and let yours roll out, okay? And then all we're going to do is we're going to cut it in half because I've got two fillings. So if you, I would suggest still cut it in half even if you've got one filling, okay? Um, it's easier to roll. We won't have too much. So it looks like it's okay. Oh, I've got to come up. This is exciting. What's that? Oh, I've got a little gift. Oh, we need a boom. I love we need a boom. Right. So if everybody's good, you've got one. That's fine. So I still want everybody to cut it in half, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a knife. Doesn't need to be a very sharp knife. And you're going to cut it right down the middle, okay? So I'm using my kitty knife, but you could use like a sharp knife as well. So just cut it nicely like that. And then just lift it up and separate them slightly. So at this point, when you're sharing dough with your brother or sister, you can do it this way. And what you can also do if it's a bit big, or you want it to be bigger even, is you can give it a little stretch like that. Because usually when we cut dough, it, it shrinks back still. So I might give it a little roll like that on the table. Want to give it an extra roll? Give it an extra roll. So you've got two pieces. Good. Right. So this is where the fun bit comes. So now you want to take your filling. So if you've got two, um, you're going to do one with one filling, one with the other. If you've only got one filling, you'll do the same on both. It's much easier to roll this up. Okay. So I'm going to take my black one. This is my olives. So that goes on that one, and my tomato goes on that one. What I'm going to do, and I quite like using a spoon, but you can use a little table knife if you do, is we're going to spread out the filling. Now, it will look like it's quite thin. Remember, these are going to be roll-ups. And we want to leave like a picture frame, a little edge all the way around. So you just want to try and shift it down, spread it out. So you've got some black filling or red filling, whatever color you've got. That's why the colors look so pretty. And we're just going to try and spread it out. Evenly. You try to stretch and it rip. Don't worry, just stick it back together. It'll be fine. We're going to roll it up anyway. Do not worry. No panic. You might have rolled it a bit too thin. And also probably what that means is the gluten, you want to, if you've stretched it, it you need, when the gluten gets really strong, it sort of makes a little board like this. It's not so easy to stretch, but it'll be fine. We're going to roll it up. So just stick the two pieces together and kind of overlap them a bit like a, you're making a repair job. All right? Jade, you made pizza. That's fine. This is basically exactly like a pizza. Perfect. So can you see, I don't want to lift this up because it will all f fall off, but I've left a little edge all the way around, okay, very much. Also so I can keep it tidy so it's not going on my table. 
and I've made it so that I can see the black all over. And I'm going to do the same with my red one. So I'm going to do the same with the red. Now, the sun dried tomato one might be easier. And those of you using stuff that's already in a jar, they're generally oilier. So you will find those easier to spread. So this is why I quite like doing it with a spoon because I'm just sort of mushing it very technically. I'm mushing and smushing all over my bread. Now, if this was a pizza, I want it really even. But remember, we're going to roll this up like pinwheels, like cinnamon rolls. So I'm not too fast if it's not very neat. It just needs to be spread so that I've got tomato everywhere. So that every bite will have tomato and every bite of that one will have some olives. So let's give it a little bit more of a spread. I think that's good. Oh, that's my black one. Yeah, perfect. And that's why this is nice. So if you want, if you were doing like um, ham and cheese or something, you could put your meat on and then you could put your cheese on top. So if anybody wants cheese on the top, you can put a little bit of cheese. I tend to do something like a paste because it's easier the first time to roll it. It's much easier for you guys to see, okay? So I'm just gonna wait a bit and check that you guys have done. All right, I'm just tidying up my work spot as I go. Good, lots of hearts, so we're all good. That's lovely, fantastic. They look really pretty, don't they? And don't they smell amazing? Mine smells amazing. All I can smell is this lovely garlic. Amazing. Right, pop that up too. Okay, so now with the bun bit, now we're going to roll up. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll from the long side. I've got like a rectangle and you've probably got one too. Okay, so I've got short side here and a really long side on down these sides. Okay, I'm going to turn it round to make it easier for me. But you can do the same. So turn so you've got one in front of you. So I've got the long in front of me. Your dough is still proving. That's fine. So just come back and do it a bit later. It needs about an hour. We left ours quite a long time. Those of you that wanted to do more of it this afternoon, I wanted you to have it if you're having like an early supper or an early tea. But if you're starting at 2.30 and you're catching up on the first video this morning, you'll still be able to have it for supper. It's absolutely fine. Plenty of time. Okay. It's huge. It's a huge need. That's fine. Did you cut it in half? So I always cut it in half, even if you're doing the same filling, because it's much easier to roll two halves and get more rolls out there. Okay. So if, if you spread one filling on that really big piece, cut it in half now so you've got a smaller piece and a smaller piece like me. All right, good. So we're going to start from the long edge. And what we're going to do, if you watch this, is we're going to, going to need fingers and thumbs everywhere. So I've rolled a little bit, and then I'm going to use my fingers, and I'm going to need to make a really tight roll. So can you see I start from one end, and I go to the other, and I keep rolling. And this is why all this filling is being pushed out. So you want to make it super, super tight. Keep working my fingers until I get to the end. And then I'm giving it a little squish so that that seam, that little bottom bit, you see on the muscle, that line is sitting on the bottom like that. So the top looks lovely. My little line is underneath. Okay. Yours is more square than a rectangle. Well, that's absolutely fine. So just cut it. Mine was a bit more square when I started. So just cut it in half. So I've got one really long, nice kind of sausagey roll there. So that's my little one. Okay. And then I'll let me you again with the other one. So I'm going to bring this one back. So whenever you do it, make sure the long side is near you. Okay. Can you roll from the short end? If you roll the short end, what will happen is you end up with a really massive circle and you won't have very many. So you need to roll from the long end. Okay. Because I'm going to start chopping that way. Okay. So with the fresh basil, um, Pavan, I put the fresh basil in with my tomatoes and made a little sun-dried tomato and basil paste. But you could put it in with it. So you can leave it out, whatever you want to do. Okay. So roll from the long end, okay? So again, I'm just going to try and just first of all, what you want to do is just press that first bit down like that, okay? Can you see? And then I'm going to start at one end and I'm going to make that tight and then I roll all the way along, make it tight. It needs to be a super, super, super tight until it stops rolling back. And then I'm going to go again. I always start from like left to right or right to left and go all the way along like this. And you can see here that the fillings start to pop out. So if it's really popping out, you can just spread it along. So we don't want to lose any. Put it in there. And then we're just going to do that. And again, to give it a little squish so that that is on the bottom. Oh, and you can see I have lost a bit. That's fine. It doesn't matter. It's a bit oily. The sun-dried tomato one's always oily and it makes a bit more of a mess. Okay. So I'm just going to give myself a little wipe there while I watch you. Oh. Give it a little wipe. Perfect. Right, how we do it. So, so you should have two nice sausages. So even if you're using one flavor, don't worry about it. Just do two 
because you'll end up a lot more rolls out here and it will be a lot better. And then what you're going to need is a nice baking tray, okay, like this. And you don't need to flour it, but if you think it's going to stick, you can just take a little bit of flour. You really don't need a lot. Just give it a tiny bit of that, okay? I don't normally flour mine, but if you want to, then that's about as much flour as you need. Okay. Give some thumbs up and some hearts if everybody is good, ready to chop. So you should have a baking tray to one side, your nice sausage rolls, and a knife. Now, if you're using a sharp knife, that's fine. Or if you're using kind of more of a kiddie knife, that's also fine. Doesn't really matter whatever you are using. It's tricky. It is a bit tricky. It is a bit tricky. As you keep rolling it, the trick is to kind of move your fingers all the way along to make sure it's nice and tight and then squish it a little bit so that it sort of sits fine. Okay, so we've got a few here that we need to wait for. That's okay. Most people are here. If we're doing mini pizzas. That's also fine. Perfect. Basil cheese and mushrooms. Mushroom pizza is one of the most good. I like that. That sounds good. Right. Do you need baking paper? No, you don't. You absolutely don't. Um, for bread, you're better just to have the heat of the tray, okay? Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start with our, one of our sausage rolls. So you can see that my ends are a bit messy, and yours probably are as well, because we didn't roll a perfect square or perfect rectangle, did we? So what I do is I just chop the ends off a little bit just to even it up. So that is just really plain dough, because I haven't been filling in there. So can you see what I've done? I just cut those. And there's nothing wrong with them. You can bake these, so we might just bake these as dough balls. They'll just be plain, okay? So that now I've got a nice, neat kind of end to my roll. And I'm just going to start chopping. And you probably want, I don't know, I think I said to you about eight. So if you want to do it that way, you could do it that way. So you could cut in the middle, cut again in half, and then cut each half in half again. So I'm going to have eight at this. And you want to press quite hard with your knife, okay? So I've got half of mine there, so I'm going to cut each half in half, and then half again. This is like a math lesson, isn't it? Then we'll know that we've got eight. Okay. Your rolls are the same size, it doesn't matter. And then what happens, when you pick them up, you can see this lovely swirl. So what I always do is I put them down with the swirl side on the top. So I don't put them down like my sausage roll side, I put them down swirly side, like that. And I give them a gentle squish as I push them down on the tray. Can you see there? So then I've got a nice roll shape so i want to see that filling so again i'm going to pick it up place it down on the tray and i need a bit of space between them i'm just going to push it down gently okay now if your if your bit of um, dough is coming out like mine is you can just stretch it and kind of tuck it underneath so i'm going to put that there and another squish and i'll show you how to do that in a minute and this is why you want to do it from the long side because if i had done it from the other way i'd have monster rolls and these are just going to get bigger so i'm just pushing Pick it up, pop them so you can see the swirls, push them down like that, okay? In fact, I'm going to move mine up a bit because I think I might get four on mine. I need a second tray today. Depends how big you make them. Put the pretty side up. So can you see there in mine? So you can see the swirly whirly pattern. And you can see those little bits sticking out. So all I do with the bits sticking out is now I'm just gonna stretch them and tuck them underneath and then give it a squish again. So if I just show you this one, I stretch it, tuck it underneath like that, and then squish them. You don't need to lift them up off the tray. And it doesn't matter, it just will be a bit neater when they bake, okay? They're like little tails. So just stretch it, tuck it under, push it down. Stretch it, tuck it under like wrapping somebody up in a bed, in bed at night with a blanket. There we go. Okay, that's really what you're looking for. Now, I made a bit of a mess here with mine, so I did my tomato first, I'm just gonna give it that wipe. So I would wrap and make about, so you can see a few centimeters thick. Um, so you put it that way and just start cutting from one end to the other, or you can work make about eight let's just make about eight of each so we'll have about 16 kind of rolls which are delicious okay. and if they're slightly different size do not worry that really doesn't matter okay about how many cents yeah i said to you can you see you can see i don't know three or four centimeters or something like that so i reckon roughly about eight it doesn't really matter and to try the important thing is try and make them the same size because if yours are bigger than mine they might take longer in the oven and if it was smaller then they'll take a bit less time but what you don't want is some massive and some that are really small. 
And then if you remember, I had these little bits. If I unroll that, you can see there was no filling in there. So there's nothing wrong with that. I can squish that up a bit like when we made dough balls. Just give them a really nice roll like that. And I'm just going to put them there and bake those. Doesn't matter. No wastage here. Okay. So I'm just going to pop those on my tray and push down there. So I'm going to do exactly the same with my second one. Don't worry if you're behind me. There's no loving the mess in the hands on. I know it does smell lovely. Hi, Molly. Good. I'm glad it is messy, but it's good fun. And you're going to clean it up afterwards. The only reason it's messy is because we put the oil in it. And as you roll, you can see you're pushing that filling out. So the next time you do it, you're going to be neater. So all I'm going to do like before is I'm going to take my knife and I'm just going to trim off those ends. Those are the ends that, you know, don't have any filling in. In fact, that one actually has got a tiny bit of filling in there. So I might leave that one as a little, a baby pinwheel. Okay. So don't waste anything. Always keep it. That one's got nothing in it. So I'll just give it a squish again. And we'll have another dough ball. Perfect. And then we're just going to do the same again. So you can do, if you want to, now that you know about the rough size, you could start on end and just cut, start cutting. But I think it's quite good so that you know that you've got the same size. So you want it like that thing. We want to take it in the middle. We're going to divide it in two to make our bridge, put our knife down, cut it. So I've got two pieces. And then each half, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to cut it in two and then cut it again in two. Everything gets cut in two, basically, until you've got eight pieces. Okay, and there are my black ones. Don't they look pretty? That's why I like using black olives. Same thing, gonna pick it up with the swirly picture on the top, pop it on my tray, squish it. I'll do the same with that one, pop it on my tray and squish it. And we'll do that tucking the tails under in a minute if you want to. Okay. So those of you doing it with brothers and sisters. You can have a little bit of a competition who's neatest. So there's my other half. So same again, I'm going to cut it in half. So I've got two pieces and then I'm going to cut each piece into two again. So fingers away from the knife. So I've got lots. Now that one is quite a bit bigger. It doesn't matter. So we'll just squish it. Take my big one. Squish it. I love the squishing. I hope you do too. I've got lots squished there. I might need to shuffle up a bit. Let's see. So you should get them all on one tray. You might need to shuffle them around a bit. You just want a little bit of space because they're going to grow again. We're going to let them get this bigger. So there are mine. Okay. And then same thing again where I've got those little things sticking out. Just stretch them. Come under. Give them a squish again. So stretch them. Tuck them under. Give them a squish again. Just to ease them up. It doesn't matter. When they bake, I didn't have enough flour to be able to do an extra one that I could show you. Here's one I made earlier. So I'll share the photo later, but you're going to share me your photos. So we're all going to know what we're doing. Right. They look super pretty, don't they? So that's what we're making. Is that good? So you should have all of yours a bit like this on the tray. You've got lots of space between them. And they should be about the same sort of size and about so how wide they are and how high they are, and that will make it easier. Hi, Elizabeth. Yours is about four centimeters. That's fine. Yeah, oh, that was mine. Sorry, that was my comment. I've got my ID guru having a having a help with me here, typing all my comments. Perfect. Okay. And so, for those of you that are planning on eating these soon, because I think they're yummy, fresh. What we're going to do is you're going to cover them again, maybe with a bit of cling film, just with a towel. I'm just going to leave them out for about another an hour or so until they get a bit bigger if you don't want them until supper time and you're going to leave them for a couple of hours that's absolutely fine you can just leave them on the side covered and then you're going to put them in the oven and you're going to bake them for about what do i say i think about 20 minutes yeah about 20 minutes on um, 200 um fan or 220 normal in the oven so a hot oven we always bake bread on a really hot oven so whatever you bake to your pizza on the other day is good um if you guys, so those of you that are watching now, but you've got to make your dough, just leave your dough on the side. When your dough's really risen, then you'll do the same thing and then bake it later. Okay. So the oven is, yeah, um, 200 fan, 220 regular. That's a hot gas oven. That's probably like gas, I think. Um, so that's really all there is to it. And what, what, like the bread dough got bigger this morning, it did get bigger. You can see all of the space between them and they'll end up kind of together. I always say they're like kissing biscuits or kissing rolls, so they get close. Um, 
do you need the second proof? Yeah, I think the second proof is good. If you want to put it in the oven, you can. Even if you just put it somewhere now for half an hour, somewhere warm. So just cover it. You could cover it like this tea towel that I've just used, which is not dirty, but obviously I've, I've been using it. So I could just put this over the top, just like that, and put it to one side and let them rise, okay? So if you've got a proving drawer or something like that, put them in there for half an hour. And when they come out, you will see that they've got a the rolls will be much lighter if you can do that, okay? And then 20 minutes. So but that's what I mean. If you're not eating them until late, just put them on the side, let them get a lot bigger, and then just bake for 20 minutes or whatever before you want to eat, okay? So that will be good. What about the cheese? If you wanted to put the cheese in, now that's what I said before. So when you spread all of your spreads, your olive, your tomato, whatever it was, you can just top it with some cheese, roll it up again, and that's fine. If you're doing it with cheese, I would try. If you've got a small grater, so you can more finely that's better because then it's easier when you roll it up okay so hi melissa and sydney so how do we are we all good are we all rolled up and looking gorgeous so i'll take this off so you can see again what it should look like so i'm going to put mine to the side probably for an hour or so and then we're going to have these a bit later at supper time and i'm going to bake them like that so that you don't eat them when they're boiling hot out of the oven because that would hurt um, but if you want them to be nice and warm then bake them fresh just before you want them otherwise you can probably put them back in the oven and and just warm them up and they are super yummy so they go really well with you know, anything you're eating like if you're having a pasta thing tonight or if you're having them with some soup or they're really yummy for lunch and they all freeze and you can have them for lunch tomorrow so it's fine yes i wouldn't freeze before cooking i would bake them and then um, freeze them um i think that would be easier okay so that would be my suggestion most because you'll get the oil and if you ever want to freeze something like this first then what you do is what we call so you put them on a tray just like this you put them in the freezer so they get solid and then we'll them out and then put them in a bag or a box or whatever you want to put them in okay because you don't want to squish these up now in the freezer but the freezer is going to kill off the yeast or is going to, so that's why i would bake it and then freeze it okay. so let me see so we don't need any cheese what else we've got any comments so you guys did really well because that was a hard one today wasn't it all that kneading all that rolling lots of Arm muscles. Um, you're all done. Fantastic. You've got a mix of sweet and savory. That's lovely, Lydia. Yeah, let me know what you what you want, what you do with that. It's a bit like you know the Pizza Express dough ball thing when they have Nutella. So normally you'd make a sweet dough, but this isn't a sweet dough, but just like that, if you dipped it in Nutella or put in this spread or something, it would be like a cinnamon roll, it'd be yummy. I just want to see those. So Natalia's done, that's amazing. It doesn't look quite right. What's what doesn't look quite right, Sarah? It doesn't really matter because they're going to bake and they're going to be lovely, okay, I promise. Um, and they'll just be straight off the tray. So tell me what doesn't look quite right and I can help you with that. It's they're all just making sort of, they just need to look really pretty. And you can see that's why I use the colours so that you, they look really nice. When they come out of the oven, like we did with the bread the other day, after about 20 minutes, you want to look nice and golden on the top. And then when you pick them up when they're going to be baked, you're going to tap them with your fingers like this on the bottom and it will sound a bit hollow and the bottom will be all golden as well. So you'll know that then they're done. Okay. This is just, I didn't put any in mine. Um, if you want to, when you spread your um, pesto or sun dried tomato or olive paste, whatever you're using, sprinkle some cheese on the top and then roll it up. Okay. So you've got cheese in the middle. So then you'll see the bit of the cheese on the top. So the cheese stick a bit to the tray, but it's good. Hi, Grace and Bethan. Yeah, for taste, exactly. And if you use pesto, so if you're using pestos like this kind of stuff, they've always got a bit of cheese in them. And then my pesto is not kind of hugely traditional today because I've got any pesto in them. It's more like a, like I said, a sun-dried tomato or a tapenade. Um, but you can use whatever you've got in the fridge. Just the shape, the shape doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It just depends how you rolled it out. So that's why I was saying to you, if you've got a really big one, you want to roll it out, cut it in half so that it's easier to roll tighter. What usually happens is the first time you do it, you struggle to roll it really tight. And if you've got a really long bit and small hand, it's hard, isn't it? It's quite tricky. So if you haven't done that first time, don't worry. It will still bake and be gorgeous. And I'm going to show you a picture of what it is, because some of them always unravel. They'll still be just as delicious, I promise. We're going to cook out at five-ish. Yeah, that's perfect. That's the kind of thing I'm going to do. So if you're, if you're eat, having yours, if you want to eat yours really soon, ideally, you want to cover them and leave them somewhere warm for half an hour and then bake them. If you do until supper time later, you're going to do what I'm going to do and what you're going to do at five. So you're just going to cover them. I'm just going to use my towel. Obviously, that towel's going to go straight in the wash. Um, I'm just going to leave them on the side while I wash up, and then when I'm ready to cook them, I'm just going to put them in the oven. So they'll be absolutely fine. Don't worry. They'll get a lot bigger. Um, I think that's really nice. So that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can cook them a bit later. 
So well done, guys. You did really well. Um, what I wanted to say was um, share your photo as ever. So those of you that knew, uh, please share your photos. You come on this thread or I create a special album for each week. Um, so I can comment on all the photos and see how they did. Any questions, obviously, put in there. I'd love to see how you got on and how yummy they were. You can tell me. And if you enjoyed the class and you can, we chose together a food charity. So it's fair share. In the pinned post, which is the very top post at the top of this page, and if you look under the post and you'll see it, there's a link to donate. I would love it if you can donate over £500 now. It would be amazing to make a, a really lovely contribution to such an amazing course. So, you enjoyed doing that, KCD. Good, good, Amy. That was lovely to you all. Thank you so much for the love and everything else. You can send me some hearts and then I know you're good. Um, you are very, very generous. Bye, Donna. So, enjoy eating your rolls. Let me know how you get on. And I will see you on Saturday for Blueberry Muffins. Take care. Bye.